The Life and Work of V. Gordon Child by Jamie Decker. Child was born in Sydney, Australia in 1892. In 1911, Child began school at the University of Sydney, graduating with honors in Greek, Latin, philo and philosophy. In school, he developed a strong leftist political stance. He became fascinated with Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. During Child's senior year at Sydney University, he became interested in the WEA, the workers, the Australian Workers Educational Association. He was intrigued by this group because of his studies in philosophy and Marxism. This group was also popular with Mark, uh, with uh, anarchists and wobbly. In 1940. Fourteen, Child left Australia to study archaeology at Oxford University. Child became quite skilled at using philosophy to, to describe artifacts at museums. At Oxford, Child became good friends with Jean Paul Palm Dutt. He uh, was later jailed and expelled from Oxford because he was a conscientious conscious objector. Uh, Child helped helped by trying to get him out of jail. He felt that World War One was being imposed on the working class by a European imperial. In 1917, Child returned to Australia where he struggled to find work because of his political views. He was blacklisted by the Prime Minister Billy Hughes who had little tolerance for distance. The trade union movement in Australia had become militant. Uh, Child was came into trouble for stating only by the abolition of the capitalist system can justice be secured and the fundamental causes of international friction be permanently removed. In 1920, Child found work as secretary for John Story, leader of the New South Wales Labour Opposition. In 1921, Child moved to London where he wrote How Labour Governs, which was published in 1923. Child continued to sort, support himself by working political jobs as well as academic posts at museums. Child was becoming interested in combining politics with his study of prehistory. Child felt that archaeology was a way of making the past come to life. European prehistory was unique and archaeology could be used to prove this. In 1925, Child finally found a full-time job as a librarian for the Royal Archeolo Archaeological Institute. He was able to travel around Europe and continue studying prehistory, which he enjoyed most. In 1927, he accepted a job as Abercrombie Professor of Archaeology at Edinburgh University in Scotland. Child developed a BS degree for archaeology. He wanted to push archaeology into the field of science. As an archaeologist, Child did not enjoy digging, but was extremely detailed in his examination of sites as well as artifacts found. Child is best known for his fieldwork in the Neolithic village of Scabray on the Orkney Islands. In 1935, shortly after the Great Depression, Child visited the Soviet Union. He wanted to see for himself how communism was working. After his trip to Russia, Child published another one of his popular books called Man Makes Himself. After World War II, archaeology was able to expand and grow in Great Britain. Child was offered a job as director for the Archaeological Institute in London. He remained there from 1946 to 1956. He definitely was a much better researcher than a teacher. At the Institute, ta Child taught his students that archaeology was a social science. He believed archaeology could give us practical knowledge as well as insight into everyday lives of people of the past. Child developed Marxist archaeology, which challenged anthropologists such as Lewis Henry Morgan's theories. Morgan believed societies progressed in a linear fashion through a three-age system. This included the three-age system included sav beginning with savagery, followed by barbarism, and finally led to civilization. Child believed change was not linear. Using Marxist theory, he studied how societies changed due to class struggle and periods of regression. Societies themselves do not really change, rather it was external forces that caused the changes. Child came up with moderate diffusion, diffusionism. Societies are interconnected and ideas flow between them. Not all ideas are spread and they can be developed independently. If one idea didn't, didn't make it into one culture, it could possibly find another. As well as teaching at the Institute of Archaeology, Child conducted tutorials and seminars. These were very exciting and engaging. One of his seminars was about prehistoric pottery, where he actually fired pottery on campus. 
Child was often hard to follow and students could not keep up with him with his lectures. In London, Child rejoined Dutt, now chairman of the Marxist journals Past and Present and the Modern Quarterly. Child became members of a member of the editorial board, the meetings for the journal were held in the London Communist headquarters. As well as this, he continued his work on the executive committee of the Association for Scientific Workers. Earlier, he had started a branch in Edinburgh. Child's goal was to create a trade union for scientists. In 1956, Child decided to retire from the Institute of Archaeology. He was truly going to be missed, and a party was thrown for him by his colleagues. Child returned to Australia in 1957 to celebrate his 65th birthday. Child enjoyed reconnecting with his sisters, niece, and friends. Unfortunately, it was not a great time for the Australian Labour Party, and Child lost faith in it. He decided to spend the rest of his time in Australia re revisiting the Blue Mountains, where he had a summer home. On October 19th, Child fell to his death in the Blue Mountains. It was not until the 1980s that one of his re relatives was able to publish Child's last writings. In his statement, he talked about old age and his choice to commit suicide. He felt he had studied everything there was able to know about prehistory. He also felt that his theories were going to be challenged and replaced due to new evidence and interpretations. Child believed he had reached his prime. It wasn't until his letter was published that Child's death was ruled as suicide.